The Internet, the iNet, the Net. You've heard of it. You've read about it. You may have even seen parts of it. But what is, what is it? Think of the Internet as a network of communication networks. Doesn't help enough? You access the Internet from a variety of points and through a variety of connections. You're saying to yourself, well, now I understand this Internet concept, of this Internet, this Internet, this Internet concept a little better, but... Hi, this is Larry King live at Cybersock headquarters. And today, we are talking to people from across the globe to find out what their views are on internet addiction. We all love our gadgets and our internet. When we lose these things, we go through anxiety attacks. We think, where am I in life without my 24-7 update on everybody's lives? It's becoming a problem. Kids used to chew on shoes and now they are beelining for the electronics. Touch phones are the new toys and Netflix are the new TV. Because of the flashy, always available stimuli. And it's not just kids. Me too. All of us. It's the same thing. Think about it. How long has it been since any of you have seen a tree? Hmm. How long has it been since I've seen a tree? Motherboard or Mother Nature. Mr. Rupert Bonham is an American mentor for troubled teens who became known to reality television audiences in 2003 as a contestant on Survivor Pearl Islands, where he placed 8th. Hey, Larry! I know what you're talking about. I love the trees, man. There's nothing more beautiful than trees. I struggle with teens and addiction every day. They don't get enough sun, man. It's like nature is calling to them, and they just don't want to hear. How do I reach these kids? The internet has caused a decrease in child activity, and obesity has become a major problem in most countries. We don't go for hikes because virtual games and tours are available on the internet. In a few years, there is going to be nothing left to take a picture of. The rhinos are dead, the elephants are next, and we're filling the trees at an alarming rate. That's why I have dedicated myself into helping kids get back in touch with nature. It's a good cause, Rupert. Now, 39 days ago, I was browsing YouTube and your name popped up. Why is it that you're so popular on the internet? I became huge on Survivor and people related to me. It's sad that they don't relate to Mother Gaia like they do to other big-name celebrities. So, what was the challenge for you after becoming famous? To not praise myself as much as my fans do, people really become obsessed with celebrities. I had to force myself not to stare in the mirror for too long. The torch for humanity is going out and a cyber reality is being born. What can we do to prevent this? It's evolution, man. We can't stop the process, but we can determine the outcome. So go outside, talk to a bird, climb a tree, shoot a squirrel, get back in touch with your primitive side. And thank you, Larry and Cybersock, for giving me the opportunity to touch these kids without the help of the Internet. Thanks, Rupert. Now... We have to ask the question, is losing touch with nature the only thing we lose? What about our ability to physically play outside? Counseling are for people that have already been sucked into the dark digital world of cat videos and 9gag. But us here at Cybersock intend to make people aware of the dangers before becoming addicts. We have to protect our children from becoming zombies of the dark digital corn. Press start. Game. 
School children are skipping PE and home ed to play on their phones. And we have all heard of people dying of long gaming sessions. Dota, I blame you. People are forgetting to live life because of the internet. So, I'm chatting with someone who knows the meaning of how to play. But this woman created a name for herself the old fashioned way. She's playful, traditional, but breaks every taboo in the book. Well, until Gaga anyway. Welcome, Madonna. Hi Larry. One of the key problems we face in these desperate times is that children don't know how to play outside anymore. They're so addicted to sitting in front of a screen. And that is why I have dedicated my life into helping kids understand that they, they should play more, they should be creative and innovative, and actually step outside once in a while. Why are you a spokesperson for internet addiction? Because I grew up during a time when if you were bored you did something useful. You didn't just sit on the couch or watch TV. We went outside and rode a bike. You lead an all-American life. Do you believe the West is to blame for the rise in internet addiction? You can't blame a country for a global problem. In South Korea, where internet addiction is a hefty problem due to the tech boom, the government is stepping in in an effort to educate the population at a very early age. Because it is estimated that over 2.5 million people are addicted to their smartphones in Korea. 2.5 million, spending over 8 hours a day on the devices. Wow, that's a lot. Be with your family, will you? Do you think kids can still be healthy and play and not just girls and boys gone wild? Kids play online because they see their parents playing online. The key is that everything should be given to them in moderation. Consumerism has driven even the sanest person to shop online. Are you really such a material girl? Well, if you want to send out the right image, then you have to look good. Shopping online has made it easier for me to dodge the paparazzi. Are people using the internet as a substitute for love? Of course, because we love ourselves more than we do others. And the internet, we can create an identity that we love and that other people can love. Thanks, Madonna. Thank you, Larry. Copy and paste. They say the internet has inspired us to be more creative and become one voice. But are we really as creative as we think we are? Or are we just a copy and paste generation? So, I dug up a dead guy. He's going to tell us all about, in my day, most famous non-famous artist of all time. People say he could hear in color. Mr. Vincent Van Gogh. The most starry star of them all. Good day, Larry. Thanks for resurrecting me. So why do we even paint? Why do we create? Is it an instinct or a basic need? I believe God gives us each a talent to express. If I had lived in this era, I would have shot myself all over again because of time wasted on useless garbage. Every person is a makeshift artist designing on a computer. Anybody can be famous through YouTube and I admit, I probably could have sold more paintings on eBay. But come on, copy and paste? It's as easy as that to plagiarize someone's work. I mean, have you seen the modernists? All the cubes look alike. Are you a true artist, Vincent? God is the true creator. I am merely a reflection of his glory. <laughs> I didn't have the exposure artists have today. I have 20 or more websites that are commemorating my work. There are even theories developed from my work. Is that why artists publish everything online these days? To just make money? They put it out there or create art solely for the purpose of becoming famous, I think. Do you think internet addiction is a mental problem? Internet addiction is not considered a mental illness as of now, but the problem is a real one. We aren't preaching that technology is the devil, because it's not. It's like everything else in the world, based in moderation. Has something precious been lost within this online culture? Creativity is constantly lost and found. The Middle Ages proves this. We create because we are restricted and the internet has almost no restrictions. And that is why people can no longer create from pure emotion alone. 
Thanks for having me, Larry. And thanks, Cybersock. <laughs> to create is to exist. And the internet gives us the freedom to exist, even in a virtual realm. This virtual realm has become a new way of living, giving people new identities and a place to be truly free. But consumer culture is still the slave master of the world. And since the internet is a free domain, brands, ads and commercials constantly brainwash into buying new things. It tells us who to be, what to wear, what to eat. Social media, the hashtag generation. When matters of freedom are of concern, I like to speak to an old friend of mine, Mr. Mahatma Gandhi. Hey Larry, from Cybersock, I would like to start by saying, live peacefully and without regret. Do no harm unto others and stop playing those damn computer games. Hi Gandhi, good seeing you. Now, tell me, doesn't the internet give us wealth without having to work for it? If wealth is gathered without working for it, one loses oneself in greed. Paris Hilton and the guy who invented the pool noodle. Wealth wasted. Do you think the pleasure derived from the internet is a true pleasure? There are more dilemmas. We only receive a synthetic happiness. A glimpse of others' lives, not our own. We are happy for the Sims character, for earning money. But it's not our own fortune that has improved. Do we gain knowledge through the internet? We gain many things, but true knowledge is earned through hard work and life experience, not through Wikipedia and QI. The debate on science versus religion has become open topic on every blog and YouTube video. With web knowledge, everybody is an expert. But whom do you believe? Religion is not about whose opinion is better, but how we live our lives and the good we do to others. Anyway, the internet has become a sort of God, and it's reaping the reward in the millions collected. Political campaigns are following in these footsteps as well, mind-washing people through social media as to whom to vote for. Do we side or let it slide? Politics without principle is just dictatorship. I would like to give that Robert Mugabe a piece of my mind. Self-shots and confession pages create a place for adoration. Yeah. What do you think about this growing narcissistic generation? It is good to love yourself, but dark faces? What is this face of a dark? Well, a dark face is... Wait, we don't have time for this. Um, do you know you are a cartoon character now? as well as a ruthless character in an online game, you yourself have become a simulated identity. Well, at least I'm remembered. Too bad it's not for the things that I've done right. Thanks, Larry. And remember, don't believe everything you see or hear on the internet. By living this way, we are losing what is most important to us, our humanity. How much more can we love ourselves? We here at Cybersock are created to tell you, the viewer, who is probably watching this online, to get the hell out of your chair and go do something useful with your life. Learn a skill or give your mother a hug. That's all from us. Leave a comment. Nowhere. This isn't Facebook. Good night.